So the role of spirituality in modern society. Spirituality brings magic. Without spirituality, life is flat and two-dimensional. Look around us, who are we? And what is this reality we live in? Knowledgeable spiritual teachers tell us that our experience of separateness, loneliness, and lack is just a surface perception of reality. If we go a bit deeper, we can discover a state of oneness, wisdom, and happiness unimaginable in our previous state. The possibility of this supernormal state captured our imagination when we were children. We loved the stories of frogs turning into princes or young boys and girls becoming great magicians. But when we grew up, we learned that such dreams are not really possible and that we must settle for owning an iPhone or some other such gadget. What a disappointment. Ken Wilber, a modern American philosopher, calls our present experience of life flatland culture, an exceedingly narrow concept of humanity, suffocating for the human spirit, a spirit which contains within itself the seeds of omniscience, absolute happiness, and universal love. In short, enlightenment. The time-honored role of spirituality is to liberate us from this flat land and give us back the divine inheritance we knew was ours when we were children. Imagine what it would be like if instead of branding us by our brains or looks, our schools and televisions describe the divinity and greatness inside each one of us and taught us the means to realize it. If, instead of idolizing wealth and fame, showed us the usefulness and joy of cooperation and fair play. The level of enlightenment in our future society will depend a lot on the level of enlightenment in our present-day education. More than ever before, we need spiritually inspired educators and a spiritually inspired media. And just as an aside, that's why in Ananda Marga we place a lot of em emphasis on education. We have uh, more than a thousand schools, mainly in very poor areas of the world. And there people are, the children are taught how to, to know themselves, to meditate, and, and the spirit of the oneness of life is the main thing that we are trying to get across. When we ask about the role of spirituality in modern society, the question falls into two parts, modern society as it is now, and modern society as it could be in the not too distant future. Considering the present moment, even as economic, social, and environmental crises worsen on a daily basis, our natural longing for spirituality is on the rise growing rapidly and having a revolutionary impact. For example, spirituality is stirring the desire for a more fair, loving, and sustainable world based on the feeling of universal brotherhood. Popular protest around the world is increasing, and there is a sense of both fear and anticipation that the old order is ending and a new one about to begin. Spirituality is stirring the growing desire for community rather than consumption and all the loneliness that goes with it. Spirituality is stirring a growing frustration with limiting beliefs, whether religious, political, economic, or scientific. Spirituality is stirring a growing interest in spiritual experience and the practices which make it possible. Spirituality is driving the proliferation of popular cultural images which symbolize our sense that human beings are capable of much greater levels of consciousness and power than we currently experience. Considering the near future, spirituality can play a role 
in giving birth to a universal spiritual science in which the fundamental principles of spirituality and spiritual practice are clearly explained and made available to all, clarifying the common goal of humanity and the path to its achievement. If we ask what is the role of spirituality in modern society, we must begin by asking what is the primary task of society. Is it to secure the banking system and property rights of the wealthy? Or is it to provide security and happiness for all? If it is the former, then genuine spirituality is a threat to society, because all are equal in the eyes of God, and the wealth of the world is our collective heritage. If it is the latter, then spirituality should be the lifeblood of the society, because deep and enduring happiness is found only in the spiritual dimension of life. Human beings have much in common with other life forms. We seek food, safety, comfort, and freedom. Unlike other life forms, however, human beings have an inborn longing for limitlessness happiness of a permanent and absolute nature. Absolute happiness cannot be found in the physical and mental realms, which are limited. Only by transcending the limits of mind and body can human beings begin to experience absolute happiness. This is the realm of spirituality. Thus, a society which is committed to the happiness of its members and which has a deep understanding of where happiness is to be found must work hard to create the circumstances for spirituality to flourish. Without spirituality there will be frustration, emptiness and conflict. There is no greater or more urgent lesson we need to learn than the ability to live and let live. There is ample proof that our present greed-based system is the cause of war, poverty, and environmental destruction. The very existence of the planet is at stake. Yet people continue to claim that a system based on greed is the natural and best way of life. Why? It is due to the lack of spirituality. Without spirituality, the inborn hunger for infinite happiness cannot be properly satisfied. Instead, it, it is expressed through physical accumulation and the desire for power. Only when we begin to redirect our longing for infinite happiness towards the limitless sphere of spirituality will we be liberated from the urge to accumulate unfair amounts of wealth and power. Thus, spirituality is the key to sustainability and social justice. Love can heal the world, so what is the source of love? We seek loving relationships and loving families. Why not a loving society and a loving planet? Anything is possible if human beings are motivated by feelings of love. As our present unsustainable society shows ever-growing signs of crisis and collapse, we have a responsibility to consider a plan B. If the system collapses, what do we want to put in its place? If we desire a more spiritual society, then we must draw on our spiritual inspiration to envision the values, the structures, and the regulations that such a society might possess. I share with you now the vision of Prout, a social theory rooted in yoga-inspired spirituality. Here are some of its fundamental principles. One, there should be guaranteed security for animals and plants. Two, the right to spiritual practice should be guaranteed. Imagine universities, parks, offices, and shopping centers with quiet places for people to meditate or pray regardless of their faith. 
There should be a guaranteed right to speak one's native language and follow one's native culture if it causes no harm to others. There should be a system of wealth distribution based on the principle that we are all one family and the universe is the collective property of everyone. How does a family, your family, organize its economy? First, the parents consider the basic needs of all the children. Does everyone have food? Do all have clothes and a place to sleep? Does everyone have access to education and health care? After taking care of these basic needs, the parents then see how much is left over and then use this remaining amount to meet the individual needs of different children. Dance classes for one, football shoes for another, according to the talents and the abilities of each child. With this approach, the individual needs of each child are encouraged and developed without having a negative impact on the basic needs of the other children. With this model in mind, Prout proposes the following principles for how a society should distribute its wealth. One, minimum requirements of life should be guaranteed to all. Two, guaranteed employment for all. Three, after meeting the minimum requirements, the remaining surplus should be distributed according to individual merit. Four, there must be a collectively agreed limit on accumulation of wealth. By viewing society as a family and by extending the principles of the family economy to the entire society, we can create a system that fairly balances individual and collective needs. There should also be a system of wealth production that keeps wealth and economic power democratic and decentralized. It is not only the way we distribute wealth that results in social or environmental harm. How we produce wealth also determines whether or not economic wealth and power can easily be concentrated in a few private hands. The global economy should be based on the principles of sustainability, localization, and economic justice. There should be regional self-reliance as far as possible, the right to develop and protect local industries must be ensured, there should be free trade in, in items which are regionally unique or which have a natural surplus or deficit. There should be the right to live and work anywhere but not the right to export capital. There should be a democratic world government responsible for preventing all forms of international exploitation. Hunger, war, and exploitation create obstacles in developing our spiritual potentialities. Meditation is practically impossible when facing starvation. Similarly, to the extent we destroy the environment, we will face an ever-growing reaction from nature. Thus, as spiritualists, we have a responsibility to work for a just and sustainable society. The first step is to formulate a clear vision of what such a society might look like. P. R. Sarkar, the founder of Ananda Marga, said, the solution for the world's economic problems, like all other human problems, is genuine love for humanity. We have the technical and social skills to solve each and every crisis facing our planet. What is lacking is genuine love for humanity. The source of that love and the courage to act on it is spirituality. Thus, if there is a future for humanity, it is one where spirituality plays the guiding role. Thank you.